not Hello all, uh, I'm Murli Krishna Karnan. I am humbled to stand before you with uh, so many experts and uh, I've enjoyed uh, listening to so many speakers who've uh, been on this stage before me. Uh, I was asked to talk about uh, Jugadu life, from Jugadu life to entrepreneurship. Uh, my uh, Entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurial activity starts off with a, a, a company my wife and I started. She's an anesthesiologist. Uh, we started a company called Anesthesia Hygiene, which focuses on uh, infection control in uh, anesthesia environment. Uh, without uh, my wife's help, uh, Sushmita, who's here, uh, none of this would be possible. So thank you very much. Uh, so I was asked to talk about this in 15 minutes. It's a lifetime for any individual. So I don't know how much I can cover. What I decided to do was, you know, there are two aspects of any entrepreneurial activity, which is one is the entrepreneur and the other one is the idea behind. So I decided to focus just on the entrepreneur because uh, I think that is the most important, uh, the person is the most important point before the idea. So, Dugard Ideas, when I first Googled it, it said it's an innovation under constrained circumstances. And I, when I said, okay, let me look at images, and I came up to this, I, I never knew that you could cool beer with an air conditioning machine, you know. But, uh, so whether uh, you're cooling your favorite drink, or you're constructing yourself a hammock in an overcrowded train, uh, the important thing to realize is that ideas are always happening around us and certainly talking to so many of you people uh, during this last uh, two days, uh, each one has been innovating in their uh, resource constrained circumstances. So ideas are always happening around us. Uh, I want to start this talk by giving you three stories. So first is, uh, the first story, we all in, you know, use Google Maps does anybody know who invented Google Maps? <laughs> you know, contrary to what everybody would think, it was not Google who invented it. Uh, have you heard of backseat driver? And I'm not talking about our spouse, the wives who give us parking tip advice during Diwali shopping, or you know, the husband who's giving parking tips for the wife for uh, you know when she's driving. Uh, does it, has anybody heard of a backseat driver app? So, uh, I don't know if you can see very clearly, but back in 1989, two scientists, they created this uh, backseat driver uh, application. And uh, this was actually created at uh, MIT in uh, Boston. And uh, they basically uh, published a paper saying that uh, a, any uh, a visual aid for the driver is helpful when he's navigating through traffic. They published this, and uh, this was immediately taken up by the MIT uh, patent attorneys, and they thrashed it. They basically said the automobile insurance company is never going to be supportive of this idea. And they basically said, you know, we're not going to proceed with this. Uh, 2004, two scientists, uh, actually two programmers, uh, created a uh, a mapping system, a navigation system that Google bought, and today, you know, it's worth billions of dollars. 
and it employs about 7,000 people. Uh, uh, I'm going to go to a second story. And, uh, you know, we all have touch screens. I've seen everybody have a phone. Does anybody know where the touch screen was invented and how much it costed? <laughs> China? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Again, uh, MIT Labs in 1989, they first made it and it costed half a million dollars. When it was first uh, created by scientists at MIT Labs, they said this is the most impractical piece of equipment we ever created. And they thrashed it again. Still, you know, 2007, when the iPhone was invented and the touchscreen just took off after that, now everything is touchscreen. Our uh, third story does anybody recognize the guy sitting next to Bill Gates? Exactly, Arunachalam Murugananam. Yeah, he's our uh, India's pad man. This gentleman has no education. He didn't invent anything new. It was always being done, and, but he was really bothered about the fact that the sanitary napkins were too expensive for rural women in India. And uh, he pursued his idea. He was called a crazy psycho. And he never gave up. He couldn't communicate his idea very well because he didn't know English. But he had this idea. And he went on to revolutionize how uh, women's hygiene in poor rural resource constrained circumstances, uh, how they can improve uh, their uh, sanitation. So what is these three stories, what do they tell us? Number one is that education is not needed to be entrepreneurial. But the second thing that's more important is having a very high education itself prevents you from being an entrepreneur. And look at the guy sitting next to Arunachalam, Bill Gates. He dropped out of Harvard. All the entrepreneurs that we can relate to, Steve Jobs or uh, even Mark Zuckerberg, Facebook, that this platform was created on, they all dropped out of school because they couldn't uh, you know, pursue that. Uh, the education was an impediment. So the takeaway important lesson for innovation that I want to share with each one of you is that it's OK to be wrong. You know? And this is where I think our education system prevents us from becoming an entrepreneur. You know, when we go to school, we go to medical school, we go to residency, we are told to be always 100% right, statistically impossible. We are always told that you have to get it right and you have to be perfect. It's not possible. You are always going to make mistakes in life, and we all know in this room that we learn more from our mistakes than we learn from our good experience, you know? So, and it's okay to be foolish. Every entrepreneur who wanted to change what was happening around them was called crazy, psycho, is, was unfit, you know? And it is okay to be foolish. This is the most important thing for an entrepreneur. It's OK for people not to agree with you. And this is the most important takeaway message that I want everyone to understand. Because what happens when you're an entrepreneur is your idea is 10 years ahead of everybody around you. So in a room full of people, when you say your idea, it's going to be challenged. It's going to be, it's going to be thrashed. It's going to be uh, written away. People are not going to give you a second chance. And more than likely, you know, you will be asked to give it up, which is what happened to the people who invented uh, Google Maps, people who invented the touch screen. So it is OK for people not to agree with you. It is very difficult to do. This is what we observed when we invented uh, or when we created anesthesia hygiene. People said it's uh, not needed. People said, why would I have to use it? Uh, now we have studies showing fecal bacteria on anesthesia machines, you know. So it is a really difficult thing for an entrepreneur to do because, like as uh, Dr. Sridhar said, we are a social animal. 
we want to be accepted. We want to be a part of a group. And when you're not a part of a group and when people don't agree with you, you're going to be standing out. So it is very difficult and it takes time to convince people. Does anybody know who said that? Stay hungry, stay foolish. This, uh, Steve Jobs said this at uh, the Stanford uh, commencement address. Uh, he told the, uh, the graduates that the most important thing that we have to be is stay hungry and also stay foolish. So let's go behind executing the idea. The most important thing, like, you know, I, I know many people will have a lot of ideas, is first you form a team. Uh, you need to reach out to people because you cannot do it by yourself. So the most important thing in your entrepreneurial activity is to find the key second, in, second person who's going to be a partner, who's going to share your idea, who's going to share your passion. That's why a company always has a founder and a co-founder. You cannot do it by yourself. So you want to form a team. You want to build your prototype. You want to test your prototype. You want to refine, to, you refine your prototype and take it to market. One of the things I've seen in our uh, Tacon uh, Facebook platform is that people have uh, shared their ideas about uh, different types of uh, gadgets that they've created and they've utilized on patients to uh, help them in their case. Uh, certainly those are all really great and uh, that's the first step. But just be very careful because every time you modify a device, you are changing its characteristics and you can cause more harm. So one of the things that you need to have as an entrepreneur is you have to have the patience to go through the steps that is involved in creating a product. And you may have to do steps two to, five, two to four over and over again. And uh, it may not be achieved even in, in a couple of years. So the most important thing is having the patience, having the wherewithal, having the passion to keep going, uh, even when it seems that you've exhausted all options. Any questions? So it's not going to be possible to completely protect your idea. Your idea is going to be copied in one way or the other. So like I always say, good ideas come from everywhere. You know, you cannot think that you are the only one who solved the problem. You are the only one who has uh, created the solution. People are always going to try and, you know, do one better. So the easiest thing to do is first creating a simple solution and rather not try to have a broad scale application. So have a very, very narrow scale of application, using, using it for just a few cases maybe, and describe its utility very closely and then slowly increase what the product does. And a classic example is the iPhone. You know, it was first created just to make sure that you can scroll easily. Whatever the phone did, it, did, it just did that better. And then, you know, you could list your contacts, you could look at your voicemail. That was in 2007. And then the iPhone, now the iPhone 10 is there, which is a lot more different than the iPhone 1. And so your idea will evolve like that. And uh, you know, the path to evolving may be very different for different ideas. Uh, it's always important to, you know, rather than discussing it over Facebook, where it's going to be viewed by everybody, you should probably start a smaller circle. And don't take too many opinions. Uh, this is the other thing that I would suggest to entrepreneurs. The person you think is an expert, who we think are going to help our company, and they will give their opinion, but they don't have to live by their opinion. It's going to cost you your idea if you follow their opinion. So you can take their opinion, but you always have to go by your gut instinct. Certainly when we created our company, many people said, including the leading experts said, it's not needed. And they're now changing their ways. So you have to believe in it and you have to like stay true to yourself. Shiv just mentioned it's specific for the country. And if you're the first to adopt a technology, let's say a simple gadget, and you start distributing it, you start testing it, you, ex you, you are the first in the market space, 
but make sure you have a utility patent or a design patent. Have a basic patent, but don't go spending crazy on these patents because what is up applicable to the US is not applicable to China and they will start ripping it out in no time at fraction of a cost. So there is no point in protecting just or working only towards patent. Start experimenting the market and take it to the market. See how it goes in your specific market and see the market acceptability, which is the end user. For us, it's the anesthesiologist, nurse anesthetist from where we come from. So be the first in the market space. See how it goes. That itself will tell you whether, is this a viable product? Can I possibly sell it here? Can people copy? Now, if there is a big marketability, now you should be worried. So at the outset, please don't worry too much about patent, patent protection, because you'll be spending fortune and at the end of the day, you may not even have a market. So the first step is have an idea, prototype, revise the prototype over and over again, but please test it. And you know, like how Murli said, just go with your gut. If people say it's a crazy idea, so be it. Be it crazy, but I'll be the crazy one to try it. Thank you. I also want to stress that, you know, we should use our education to help the field and make sure that we all advancements like if you look at now especially in anesthesia newer drugs it's hard to come by newer technologies are hard to come by and they're always focusing on the uh, European and the Western markets but that's not the case there's so many things happening in this country that we need innovation for so we should always try and innovate okay thank you thanks Moodley feel proud to uh, we have worked with you